a mispronunciation. Welcome, Mr. Nowacki. Go ahead. Good morning. Uh, I have submitted extensive documentation uh, in regards to my family case, which was adjudicated in the Stanford jurisdiction and transferred to the regional family trial docket uh, in, uh, in Milltown, Connecticut. Uh, I have also included uh, for the edification of those who are not lawyers an extensive set of documentation pulled down that was collected by the law library, Lawrence Cheeseman. Uh, who did extensive work on case law in regards to the responsibilities of a GAL uh, and the responsibilities of an AMC, as well as I did pull the statute in regards to the 16 qualifications in the exact language, which in fact was misquoted by the attorney who spoke earlier today. It just shows you how little people who practice law know about the law in this state. I am here today to, to address the subject of post-judgment <clears throat> appointments of attorneys for minor children who interfere with children's rights of informed consent that they are entitled to underneath the rules of professional conduct. This is another outrage that represents nothing more than racketeering in this state. That a, that a judge can look at your financial statement of what you have worked a lifetime to earn in a post-judgment action and appoint an attorney at $425 an hour who had no statutory authority whatsoever to interrupt a very successful joint legal and physical uh, custody plan, a parenting plan that was approved as an order of a court five years before. What right does an attorney have to charge you funds to deconstruct that which you worked for as part of a court agreement? Once again, Mr. Nowacki, please. I, Once I, again, I, your, I am going to ask the, the members of the audience to restrain themselves in deference to the number of people who are still waiting to speak and also for not to, uh, uh, to, to be respectful to people who may have other opposing views. So please restrain yourselves or we're going to start asking people to take themselves Let out to the hallway. Let me read Connecticut General Statute 46B-56A, parentheses B. There shall be a presumption affecting the burden of proof that joint custody is in the best interest of the minor child where the parents have agreed to an award of the joint custody or so agree in open court at a hearing for the purpose of determining the custody of a minor child or the children of that marriage. What right did Attorney Veronica Reich have to file an ex parte motion for order in the Stanford Court on December the 2nd of 2009 <clears throat> to violate my custody rights, which I worked tirelessly for for over five years to responsibly conduct myself as a parent, as a fit parent, in the best interests of my two children. You tell me, underneath your rules of professional conduct, that you are obliged to uphold as attorneys, where you do not have a responsibility to report Attorney Veronica Rice for having violated the state laws Mr. of this Nowaki, state. Mr. would you summarize your comments, please? No. I want this committee's two, two co-chairs, who are nothing more than lobbyists for the current legal position of this state, to resign from their appointments. You have operated, we have watched these hearings on television, and we have seen how you have operated these, these hearings in a manner that's prejudicial and biased against okay, the statutory obligations of your, of your professional Mr. responsibility. Mr. Nowacki, please summarize your comments. Thank you very much for your comments, sir. Any I'll questions be more than happy to take questions. Are there any, are, are there any questions? Time's not up. Ms. Baranol. The, the bell did yes. go off. I have a question. When you say that the, uh, you had a parenting plan for five years and then the AMC just, like a judge just said automatically in the, out of the, the air that, you know, all of a sudden this, I'm going to pick this family. Like, how did it come okay. about? This is exactly how it occurred. All right. During discovery motions, my ex-wife was found out to have sequestered funding from an inheritance that she re received post-judgment at the Swiss Bank Corporation in Switzerland. 
Judge Lynn, uh, the, the presiding judge in family court at that point in time was Judge uh, Schofield. What occurred was that when I discovered this, I asked for an indemnification that was required underneath my separation agreement to protect me from my knowledge of the existence of a foreign account that wasn't disclosed on my ex-wife's financial affidavit. What I did was I filed a grievance on November the 10th with the Judicial Review Council, indicating that Judge Schofield, Judge Malone, uh, and, and, and uh, uh, one other judge had engaged in the obstruction of the disclosure of financial information involving a foreign sourced account. What occurred? Five days after that, Judge Schofield received a notice from the Judicial Review Council that she was under review for violating federal law. What did she do? On December the <laughs> 2nd of 2009, she declared a trial that was going on with another judge who was Judge, uh, 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 judge uh, Stanley Novak that had already had five hearings. As the presiding judge in Stanford, she declared that judge's hearings a mistrial, ordered me immediately to conduct ab initio the entire proceedings that had gone on in front of the chief administrative judge of, Stan uh, of family court in Stanford, who is Judge Taggart Adams. When I began to reintroduce all of the evidence that had been produced at that hearing, what did Judge Adams do? When I turned to Form 1116 on the tax returns and asked the question, where is that income on your financial affidavit? You know what the judge did? He told me. If you don't get to something substantive, I'm going to dismiss this witness. Mr. Nowacki, I, I don't believe your response is, is actually an no, answer she, to Ms. No, Bruno's she asked me what the sequence the was of what occurred that resulted in the severing of my custody rights. On that same day of December the 2nd, after this proceeding was convened up in Judge Taggart Adams, Attorney Veronica Reich excused herself from the court as the attorney for the minor children, claiming that she had no interest in the financial portion of these proceedings. She then took a ex parte motion for order downstairs to Judge Schofield. At 12.45, when the court recessed for lunch break, I was told to report to Judge Schofield's courtroom, where an ex parte motion for order was entered into that courtroom that removed my custody rights without a hearing. This is deplorable conduct. It violates every constitutional and civil right that exists in this country to due process and equal protection of our rights. This Thank is you. a, this, and you know what? What occurred then is not only was my custody rights stripped, but I was ordered to monitored visitation. So on December the 1st of 2009, I have full joint legal and physical custody of my two children. And at 2 o'clock in the afternoon on December the 2nd, I'm stripped of every custody right. In order to have monitored visitation to be with my kids, you know what that amounts to? Pay per view parenting. Okay? It is, and there is no statutory authority absent physical abuse or emotional abuse that was not alleged in that complaint that resulted in the severing of my custody rights. There was never a hearing on an ex parte motion for order, and the state statutes require one within 14 days. January the 22nd, Judge, uh, Dr. Kenneth Robson, who conducted an absolutely bogus psychological investigation of this case, all right, who sits, by the way, on your training now. Mr. Nowacki, I think you've responded to uh, um, Ms. Verano's no, question. No, but, but that's not so, the end of this. So what, what, what ended this, okay, was that my rights of self-representation then in the court were removed on January the 22nd. If there is another question by a member of the panel, perhaps you could address that. Are there any other questions by members of the, of the task force? I'm sorry, you know, I... I I appreciate all that you have to say, and we're definitely going to read your testimony. Um, but in fairness for everyone else, um, I just want to just ask you one last question, just one answer, a one-word answer. Do you feel that in this type of sy system that when you um, challenge any of these people, 
that there is some type of consequences that comes back. Yes there's, or no? Just have, yes or no? The, the answer is absolutely yes. Okay, okay thank, thank you so you much. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so the next person on no, the list Mr. is- Mr. Weissmuller sir, has a question, sir. I'm sorry, I didn't see your hand. It's okay. Um, it, your story is very compelling. It is. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't. It, it doesn't ring uh, in line with any judicial procedure that I'm aware of, where a chief presiding would interrupt a trial that's uh, that's already in progress. Um, and I, I've actually served in a very small community where we had three judges. I was the chief presiding, and uh, so it's disturbing to hear. Um, have, do you feel that in your written testimony you have fairly recounted all of this so that we have a... The, the, the costs to this are not measured in the $230,000 worth of fees, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. they, you cannot possibly imagine. It cost me my business career of 35 years at the CBS Television Network, okay? It cost me a substantial portion of my retirement savings because I was ordered to pay those fees. I was sent to jail for seven years while my fiance was undergoing cancer treatments. And I was forced to purge that money out of my IRA accounts for which now I owe federal income tax and state income taxes to this state. This is an outrage. Not only did, what did, did this, this woman act unlawfully, she was permitted by the court to do so. There are laws that say that the presumption when the parents have agreed to joint legal and physical custody, that if my ex-wife filed a motion for full custody, it was her burden of proof to prove that there was a substantial change of circumstances that didn't exist. My kids were denied their right of informed consent. They were 13 and 15 years old at the time. Neither one of them asked for the custody arrangement to be modified. This was an independent action done for the penurious interests of Veronica Reich and, the, and her law practice that just started up at Bipolic Blue Ice and Mulcahy and sanctioned by this court in direct retaliation for exposing financial fraud in a financial affidavit. This is an outrage that this committee is being chaired by two lawyers who have no other purpose but to preserve the status quo. And we ask for their removal. Are there any other questions by members of the task force? Thank you, Mr. Nowacki. And now we have, and I apologize, James Kreitler. Follow